A ho ho ho! <laughs> Welcome to the Christmas Day special bonus episode of Bottom of the Stream. Merry Christmas, Adam. Merry Christmas, Nick. How are you? Very good. Good. We've got some interlopers on board the stream boat. Excellent. It is, of course, the wonderful Harrison and Jordan from Grief Burrito. Hello! <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. I am the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> pirates! Oh no! Festive pirates. Bur- the worst kind. Festive burrito pirates. <laughs> yeah. How are you boys? Mm. So good. So good. Got a brew. Ready to go. Good, Excellent. good, yeah. On board with their swelling sack full of movies. <laughs> Christmas sack. <laughs> oh dear. They've left their opulent burrito mansion. Managed to sidestep we around have, the wizard's have. tower without being noticed. And they've made yeah, it. We brought the the, uh, the cat, cat burrito drones. They got us here safe. Nice. Good. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. No, it's good to have you back. It was fun times last year, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll it have was. more fun this year. <laughs> yeah, so yes, last year yes. we did our top 10. Top 10. Favourite films? Of all Best time. films? Yeah. Yes, a mammoth episode. It was, it was like two hours and something, uh, wasn't it? So what are we doing this year? This year we're doing our top five worst films of all time. Oh. We've gone with five because we're, we're generally quite positive people, the four of us. Mm-hmm. Our podcast is very positive usually. Yours is like stupid yeah. positive. So we don't we don't do a lot of <laughs> negative. So we thought we'd do some negativity to this Christmas period. <laughs> yeah, make this Christmas as shit as the rest of twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can have some real fun with bad films, though. Of course you can. We bad, do, we have to quite a lot. We do often. <laughs> yeah, you do every week, pretty much. <laughs> bad films are the best films. Yeah. My uh, my girlfriend has a classification of it's so bad that it becomes like a good bad yeah, film. There's, there's definitely good bad films. Like like Geo Storm, that was a bad one. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely good bad films out there. Yeah, and uh, there's mm-hmm. something really interesting about when that is done by design as well. Yeah. And it's it's now a whole sort of cottage industry, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, one of your favourites, like oh, Sharknado yeah. or them. Yeah. That, was... that was the one I was going to say, yeah. That's, uh, that very nearly made it into my top ten last year. Really? Very nearly. <laughs> really? Yeah, I love it so much. Wow. It's a low bar. How do you design something so bad that it's good like what if it's just too good to be bad and then it stays in that area it's just a shit film it's a real skill to get right yeah yeah because yeah you're right jordan because if you if you get too far there are you just then unmemorable and you've not made Mm. a bad film (laughs) you've just made a film (laughs) or a good bad film yeah it's just a film (laughs) it's just a bad bad film it's just a mediocre film yeah i think the first sharknado though was like supposed to be serious and people were like, oh my God, this is the most ridiculous thing. And then the producers were like, yeah, this was on purpose. <laughs> yeah. and then, it definitely grew a life of its own, didn't it? Yeah. And, and then they had people oh, yeah, queuing up to get on. Yeah, there's so many cameos in them. I mean, Jedward are in one of them. Right? Yes, yeah. 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 It's a yeah. film about fish. It'd be on Poipus. <laughs> hey. Oh my God. I'm going to leave <laughs> this podcast and our podcast for that. Just never podcast ever again. No, that's it. My career is done. <laughs> That would be a crying shame because your podcast is wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Oh, thank Much, you. Muchly appreciated. He's going to stay now. Good. That, that was I'll stay it. for a bit longer. Better make more puns. <laughs> right. Who's ready? <laughs> no. So how how have, how's your year been since we last spoke? It's been pretty good, hasn't it, Jordan? It's been a busy one. We've done a lot of shit on the podcast. You did. Insanely do busy, yeah. I was listening to your episode today mm. where you were listing off all the spookies you, you'd done. It's, it's crazy how many you've actually got through this year. I know, I know, because it's it's usually one a month, but then we do, well, like, you know, we do one every week through October. So then we took a break in November, didn't do a spooky that month, and then we'll come back with a Christmas spooky about black-eyed children and why they actually secretly want Christmas presents. Yeah, terrifying. Excellent. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so we're going to start, as we've now, st- well, we've already started, but we're going to start <laughs> again. Start um, again, yes. I believe Nick's got a game to play. We have got a game. Um, let's, let's do we're it. We're going to do a team game. So for you two, well, okay. for you two, because I think Ad's already seen these. So. Yeah, I'm going to sit back and relax. <laughs> um, okay. Do you want to, first, before I um, <laughs> before I get started, do you want to tell us a bit, uh, for anyone who's not heard your show, what's Gwack? I forgot how what the name stands for. <laughs> Unchar- how do you forget every time? accurately <laughs> characterised, I think. I'm pretty yeah, sure that's yes. it. I think that's it. You invented it and you forgot it. It's like Einstein being like EMC cubed. Like you're just completely forgetting the end of it. Oh, well, that's the thing. What? We always just call it guac. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what's Fair the premise? Enough. 
So the premise is that I describe a game badly, but accurately. So usually from a different perspective and has got to guess what it is. Yes. Excellent. And they're very difficult. So I've just totally stolen that. And <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're going to have a game of <laughs> Mwak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Movies unsuitably accurate. Correct. Characterized, right? Ah, nice. Correct. How did you so, guess, Harrison? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So I've got um I've got ten descriptions. Um and please confer amongst yourselves, show your thinking, and we'll see we'll see how many we can get. Okay. Mo- okay. most of these are sort of lifted slash borrowed from a couple of Twitter feeds which have been around for the last few months either uh, movies described badly or <laughs> movies described as boringly as possible. So, I'll give okay. you the descriptions, and uh, yeah, see so if you can guess which movie uh, they are talking about. They're all pretty, all right, pretty big movies. So yeah, I think so. I've heard there, of all there's of nothing them. here that's like <laughs> totally obscure. So there, there's no real sort of trick questions that way. I imagine Jordan's not seen any of them. A Parisian indie film. I have yes. seen <laughs> six. I have seen six movies, and it is proven that I am bad at games. So this is going to go swimmingly. <laughs> well, there's there's ten on this list, so you're fucked straight away. <laughs> yeah, you fucked. <laughs> Okay, first one. So, the description is, man turns off alarm clock 3,176 times. Uh, it is... Groundhog Day? Correct. Yes, that's what I was going to say, yeah. Jordan sneaks in there. <laughs> Sorry. I know, that's nice. Fine. That's just to, okay. That's just to get you acquainted. They're not all that easy. Have you seen Groundhog oh, Day? Oh, shit. Okay. I have, yes. No, <laughs> that's all right. Oh, my God, he's seen it. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's on Netflix. I think it is, yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I think you're right. Good, good start. Uh, Number two, a political confrontation ensues after a structural flaw is discovered in a government building. What the ass? (laughs) What? (laughs) I'll I'll repeat it again. A political confrontation ensues after a structural flaw is discovered in a government building. It's a pretty big movie. I I I want to say Die Hard, but I've never seen it. It's a good guess, but it's not correct. Uh, I'm really not sure with that. Really not sure. Mm. Political. Political flaw. <laughs> I'll give it one more time and I'll give you the answer. A political confrontation okay. ensues after a structural flaw is discovered in a government building. Have you got a clue? Do you want a clue? Sci-fi. Think Please. sci-fi. Think sci-fi. That was, that was pretty much going to be my clue. <laughs> uh, I Think the biggest of all got- sci-fi. <laughs> Biggest of all sci-fi. Oh, Star it's, Wars? Oh, yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. That, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, uh, I feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Number three. Husband loses patience mm. with his family at an all-inclusive winter resort. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I'd be disappointed if you don't get this one. All-inclusive Christmas resort. I'm trying to think of any film with a Christmas <laughs> resort. It's a winter resort, not a Christmas resort. Winter resort, sorry. I, I, I would say three of us should definitely nail this one. 100%. <laughs> Is one of them me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. The pressure I'll, is off. I'll repeat again and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a look. Uh, husband loses patience with his family at an all-inclusive winter resort. Is it home alone? <laughs> I, I would definitely concentrate on the husband losing patience <laughs> part of this sentence. <laughs> we have spoken about this film before. Angry Dad 3. For, for about two hours, has. Yeah. I think it's on record. Oh, The Shining. <laughs> the Shining. Yeah, it's The Shining, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Fucking hell. I was thinking like light-hearted <laughs> comedies. I don't know why. No, so, I, 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 I suppose, like, yeah, The Shining the is a Christmas film. <laughs> yeah, same. It's turbo I'm time. I'm enjoying this. this I, I think this, this might be the toughest one, but we'll see. Um, so number oh, four. Shit. Small town doctor brings three people closer together. Human centipede. Correct. <laughs> yeah, human centipede. Yes. <laughs> that says a lot about that. you, Jordan, that you don't get the shining, but you do get the human centipede. Yep. I've yeah. not seen it. Yeah. I I've, just I've I was just there it. like no, what I would the worst thing be of that? <laughs> uh I have and I wouldn't recommend <laughs> it. <laughs> I've got a, a scratch poster of horror movies and it's on there. And so at some point I'm gonna have to watch it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just do it. <laughs> that one's okay. staying unscratched, he says. <laughs> As long as it's not a scratch and sniff poster, <laughs> you should be fine. <laughs> oh, oh, it's made Ooh. me shudder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, number five. 
A moody tween is sent to her room and visited by two priests to talk through her issues. Exorcist. Well done. Yeah, straight in <laughs> yeah, there. Nice. Some of them are a lot easier than others. <laughs> Good. Uh, number six. Man with sleep disorder develops split personality and starts unofficial boxing organisation. Fight club. Oh, fight club, yeah. yeah. That one, that one, they might as well just give you the answer. <laughs> it might as well, yeah. well have just said, and starts a fight club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I so worried then, though. I was like, has Jordan seen fight club? As I gave the answer and just ruined the ending to fight club. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, spoilers. Uh, yes. <laughs> come on, it's 21 years old. It's got it's got to be, it's got to be uh, a, away from the statute of limitations <laughs> for spoilers. Yeah, surely. I suppose. Yeah. yeah, you got a point. It holds up. It's one of the best films ever made. I have not seen it for many it's years. Very good. Uh, uh, no, I've not seen it for a while, actually. I do remember watching it a lot <laughs> and in and around the time it was, it came out. Yeah, you introduced it to me. Did I? Yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> to yourself. Not remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number seven. Uh, a guy that's alone in the forest kisses a dead body while seven other dudes watch. <laughs> Snow White. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot darker when you put it like that isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean obviously pretty grim anyway but <laughs> <Me>. yeah <laughs> okay nearly there we've got three left number eight a young boy discovers that having wood in your hand can lead to all sorts of magic <laughs> oh my god that is the worst <laughs> oh wow um, I'd consider bleeping that description <laughs> uh, yeah this one must have uh, come from oh, Harry select. Potter it's Harry Potter Correct. Yeah, nice. I've changed my mind. This might be the toughest one. The, is this number nine? Number nine. This is my favourite one. Immigrant adoptee is repatriated to country of birth. He experiences culture shock and prejudice. <laughs> yeah, this Elf? is impossible. Whoa! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my god! I was gosh. just going to say this is impossible, and you got it straight <laughs> off. It's that. I was say it was that or, Elf. It was that or George of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, want, do you want me to like give some like hmm uh, so you can edit it in? <laughs> no, I'm really impressed by that. That wasn't my favourite. This last one's my favourite. Uh, last one. Father of two decides to start a stone collection. Breaking Bad. No, it's father. No, he, he doesn't have kids. He does no, have a kid. He has one kid. He does. And it's not a does film. He? Um, uh, I've not watched Breaking Bad in a long time. You just completely forget that Walt Jr. exists. He also has a baby no, daughter no, as well. Baby as well. How you cussing? No. I, Hank starts collecting the rocks. That's true. The minerals. But, but we're on a tangent because Breaking Bad's a TV show in other films. <laughs> okay, <It is>. sorry. <laughs> right. It starts collecting rocks. Once you know this one, you'll you'll kick yourselves. I thought th I thought this would be get this straight away. Can so you read I'll it again? Repeat again. Father of two decides to start a stone collection. It's not Shawshank mm -hmm. Redemption, is it? No. 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 I'm 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 surprised. You kick yourself when you know it. Father of Two starts a stone. We're talking a big movie it's or really, a pair of big movies. It's a really clever description as well. Yeah, it's def definitely a pair of movies, maybe even more. Oh, my brain maybe is hurting. Even more. Is it definitely more? <laughs> Not? Well, it's, primarily it's two movies, but it is more, it's yeah. the culmination of a bigger story. It takes a while to collect these things. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. It's fucking <laughs> Avengers, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> big purple daddy himself, Mr. Thanos. The big purple Jesus. daddy. Mm -hmm. Called that before. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when did you go wow. purple? <laughs> Brilliant. No, that was fun. That well was done, guys. Well done, guys. I'm impressed. Thank yes. you. Good quiz. Thank you, Nick. You did better than that than I've ever done at Quack because I've literally never got a clue when you do that. <laughs> it's so hard. John's ruthless with Quack. It is. You haven't done it for a while. You need to get it back. Bring it back. Yeah, we That's haven't done it this point. month, have we? All I want for Christmas is Quack. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair as, a, as the great. famous song goes <laughs> yeah um, we'll figure it out I'm sure you I, we I mean I'll I'll somehow think of more games because I've hit a bit of a dry spot with them <laughs> you is just, that why you haven't suggested you, you, it <laughs> you've just got to put them in when they come to you that's all that's all we go on <laughs> yeah there's yeah. quite a lot of games yeah thanks for that nice <laughs> nice bit of, <laughs> nice metric there try harder. Thank you. Over, over the years there's been quite a few that have come out more than yeah. 10? Yeah, easily. Yeah. There easily are literally many. There are literally <laughs> tens of games. <laughs> Unless you've got PlayStation 5, then there's like four. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the future. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we, uh, shall we move on to the 
good content. Yeah, okay. Not that that oh, was bad oh, content. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Oh, that was harsh. <laughs> Absolutely brutal on this fine Christmas morning. I know. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that it's Christmas morning. Did I mention that? We, well, said, it is. we said Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas, start. everybody. <laughs> Right, so we're going to count down from five to one. We'll just do it in a random order between the four of us. Yeah. And see what Two, people three, have got. Two, three, four, five, one? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I will get... Uh, you'll just have the same movie five times from me if we try to do that. I'll just get confused. Yeah. I suggest we go five to one. Good. Yeah, good plan. <laughs> Let's do that. That's much more Oh, sensible. we were meant to order these. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was the whole point. <laughs> ah, yes. Great. Uh, Jordan could go last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I got it. It's fine. Nick, do you want to start us off? I can start, yeah. No probs. Do um, it. What's your fifth worst film uh, of all time? Well, I'll just explain my thinking first. Cool. So, I've not necessarily gone with the five worst films I've ever seen in oh. terms of technically. So you've ignored the brief. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I've probably seen some of these aren't necessarily the worst, you know, special effects, although there is some pretty bad ones. But it, mm-hmm. it's the sort of experience as a whole. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what the, I've done. A couple right. of like personal things in there. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not mentioning any films that we've seen on the podcast before either, are we? No, I've not got anything that we've talked about on the show. Even though some of those are the worst films I've ever seen. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. There's, there's a couple on there that would make it easily be some of the <laughs> worst I've ever seen. The Anomaly, for instance. Um, yeah, so that's kind mm. of my thinking. So I, I'll be interested to see if we've got many, uh, many crossovers because I've not gone obscure, really. No, I haven't. Um, but with good reason, I think. So, <laughs> fifth for me is Batman and Robin. Wow. It's awful. No way. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's really bad. It is pretty bad. It is that now, bad, but it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's awful. And I think it's gained a bit of a, is it on the borderline of it's so bad, it's good? Some yeah, people I may think say it so. is. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. But th- one of the reasons I've still got it in there is because I can remember going to see it at the cinema as well. I really liked, obviously, the ba- the three that preceded it, the two Tim Burton films, even the the third one, Batman Forever, with Val Kilmer. That's that's fine. Um, went mm-hmm. to see this for the first half an hour. The picture wasn't synced up with the oh. with the sound. Oh no, <laughs> that's <laughs> never good. It was extremely confusing, and then you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger turns up looking like an ice lolly. <laughs> He does. Those silver contacts are great, though. But I, lo- I love the thought that if it wasn't synced up, that Batman had Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like when it, in one of these um, improv shows, when every uh, every answer to the question is like one behind. <laughs> that's really yeah, hard. that's hard. That stuff. Um, you know, yeah, but I don't like the design of it. The Batmobile shit. Yeah, it's like some weird open top caddy type <laughs> thing. Bane's terrible. Bane is awful. Yeah. Yeah, Bane is awful. I like and, Luchador Bane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the point where they do sort of get the bat skates out, and yeah, it's a bit much, isn't it? And oh, do the yeah. speed skating. I think I'm, I, I'm gone. This is a really bad. I forgot film. about that bit. <laughs> I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, I did yeah, as well. No, you got me. It is a really bad film. Look at all the other Batman movies, which all have their pluses and minuses. This, and I know they were kind of going for the campy stuff, and there's reasons why it, why it's so bad. It was pushed, pushed to meet a deadline. But it's just shit, guys. It, it killed the franchise for a long time. Exactly. <laughs> for a very long time. Exactly. So yeah, that's my number five. Batman and Robin. Fair. I'll allow it. Fair. Yeah, I can Fair see play. that. Yep. Do one of you two want to go next? We'll do it. Mix the you order go first, Jordan? Yeah, I'll take it. You go. Okay, I'm going to go with... It's between two for me. I reckon... Need for Speed. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay. With... um. Aaron Jesse Paul. Pigman. Aaron Paul. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> or his real really, name. We were just yeah. talking about Breaking Bad as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of Breaking Bad references here today. Yeah, so this is from a guy called Scott. I should have practiced saying his name beforehand. I wow. never do that. Just, W-A-U-G-H. It's, it's, I'm terrible for that. So. And it's, yeah, don't worry about it. People on this podcast all know that we don't get names right ever. <laughs> That's fine. Just say the wrong name on yeah. purpose. This one's got Paul Aaron in it. Uh, <laughs> So it came out in 2014. It's got 6.4 on IMDb. So it's kind of your guys' wheelhouse, really. Yeah. Uh, so the the story's about high. a guy who's... Yeah, it's stupidly high <laughs> because it's a shit film. 
So <laughs> he's like a Frame Street racer who's released from prison and he's going to enter a race for revenge or something like that. And then someone puts like a bounty on him. It's really convoluted. But I went to see this in the cinema and I ended up walking out part way through. Wow, really? No way. It's the only film I've ever walked out on. But I, I've never walked wow. out in the cinema. Also yeah. based on a movie, on a, it's a movie based on a game, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it is. of course it is. Yeah. I think very loosely. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if Aaron Paul was like a fan of Need for Speed or he was just like, right, I need to get into movies now because Breaking Bag, ba- Breaking Pack. Breaking, Breaking Bag is bag. so big. <laughs> like Tesco on the way home. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. He'd lose a lot of money in Breaking Bad if he broke a bag. He would. Yeah. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Meth's expensive. Uh, I <laughs> so wouldn't know. <laughs> Me neither. So he, <laughs> I don't know if he's just decided, like, I need to get into films and this seems like a reputable, you know, whatever. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was a just brand. really annoying. The camera jumped about everywhere when they're in the car. Instead of just, like, jumping a little bit to a different perspective, it was like every five seconds it'd shift and it really annoyed me. That and it's just it it didn't make any sense and the motivations were a bit weird and it just annoyed the hell out of me. So I walked out. You just sound like you were very right. irritable that day. That doesn't sound I'm, like when Jordan. am I not? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen it. It is pretty bad. I'll go with you on is that. It? I don't know if I've seen it. I think I, mean, I have. I, I don't think it even gets made without like the fa- it's this fast and furious copy, yeah. isn't it? Basically. Yeah, it's a clone, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good choice, Jordan. Thank yes. you. Right, I'm going to go. Fil- Wait, it's a film you guys haven't seen. Holy I don't think shit. I've seen it. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it, yeah. Well, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah nice. it's pretty bad. I'm pretty sure I 50%. haven't seen it. So, yeah. Yeah, I Got haven't me. either. Um, my first pick I'm going to go next is from 2002. Um, mm-hmm. We all know that I'm not a big fan of comedy films. I don't yes. enjoy them at all. Um, this has got two top comedy actors in who I hate both of them. Um, I'm going for I Spy. Okay. With Owen Wilson and right. Eddie Murphy. I've never had the pleasure. <laughs> Do tell. No, I, I avoided it's that one. Terrible. Um, there was a point in my friendship group around 2002 where everybody was watching it all the time. Right. And I, I cannot stand it. It's it's fucking dog shit. Um, it's, <laughs> Eddie Murphy plays a boxer. And okay. Owen Wilson plays a government agent. And for some reason, somehow, it turns into a buddy cop movie as they're trying to get a missing jet that can go invisible from Malcolm McDowell. Um, <laughs> wow, okay. That's quite a plot. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so terrible. It's got it's got quite a good cast. It's Eddie Murphy, Owen Wilson, Famke Janssen's in it. Uh, Malcolm McDowell, as I said. Gary Cole's in it. It was big. It was big in 2002. It's got 5.5 on IMDb, though, so I don't think it holds up. Um, strong 5.5. No. Strong 5.5, never- <laughs> yeah. No, it's terrible, and... I want it relegated to the annals of history. Never want to see it again. I watched the trailer for it earlier and that even annoyed me. <laughs> just to, bubbled just up to some bile. To your yeah, I watched the trailer of all five of my films earlier and I'm like, yeah, these are all bad. I'm, I'm confident okay. in these. But yeah, I've gone with I Spy as my first one. Okay. That would be controversial with some you... of our friends because I it... guarantee some of them still like it. <laughs> <laughs> if you put that description that you gave of what the film was about next to like other films and asked me to pick one that was fake i'd go for that one <laughs> yeah that would be the yeah. fake because one that just yeah, sounds sure. mental it is mental it does sound a bit just... randomly generated doesn't it <laughs> it yeah. does yeah and... i just want to say that the amount of vitriol that adam has for number five on the list i'm very excited for the next four <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go purple i'm gonna go purple yeah big purple daddy <laughs> gonna be thanos by the end of the day <laughs> I don't have a lot of time for... I have a lot of time for bad... Like we were saying earlier, bad good films. Or good bad films. Mm-hmm. But if a film yeah. is shit, then I've got no time for it whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not up for it. Okay. Harrison, round this off. Round the top five off. Okay. Are you ready for my number five? Because it More is... The Howling 2. Your sister is a werewolf. Or, <laughs> as it's more commonly known, its other name was Sturber Werewolf Bitch. <laughs> That's a much better name. It is. I know they should have kept it as that. So this <laughs> I have is not a, the pleasure it's a, about one. <laughs> it's it's a, a wonderful, terrible, terrible experience. It's a an old horror movie that my friend Martin actually bought for me in Spanish on Blu-ray. So thank you very much, Martin. Uh, it's from 1985 and it's directed by Felipe Mora. No. And 
It's just ridiculous. The The essential gist is that this guy's sister is murdered in a news studio. She's like a broadcaster. And someone gets hold of the tape of her being murdered. And it turns out that she's mid-werewolf transformation during the murder. Which, right. Like, already you're just like, <laughs> what? So Christopher Lee is somehow in this film. Okay. And what? he turns up. Yeah, I know. I know. He turns up at the funeral and someone asks him a question and he's just like, your sister is a werewolf. And then just <laughs> fucks off and just leaves it at that. <laughs> so essentially he's a demon hunter and he's trying to find Sturber, who's like the werewolf queen. And then they end up in Eastern Europe to find this, like, I don't know. It's like a big group of werewolves where they're having basically a hairy werewolf orgy in a castle. And there's, there's a lot of boobs. The best kind. <laughs> I know, <laughs> those little <laughs> hairy boobs. But at the end, I just want to point out that the, the credit sequence at the end of the film is, and I'm not joking about this, it is the main actress who plays Sturber ripping a shirt off, showing her tits, in time with the music, over and over again. And it just what? flips back and forth in like it, mirrors. <laughs> yes, it's just constant. Like I'll send you the trailer for it after because it is ridiculous. It is, it's horribly shot. The sound is terrible. But how the fuck did they get Christopher Lee? Like, I don't know. I don't know how. The intro scene is him reading from a book while stars fly past in the background. And it's the way it's recorded is like Christopher Lee thought it was just going to be a voice thing. So he's just sort of looking down at the book reading and then now and then looking <laughs> up and looking back down. And then a skeleton is just like phased in, like brought up opacity in the background. And it just like fades it like a plastic shit looking skeleton. And then the film just cuts into the funeral. <laughs> this sounds it amazing. Insane. Maybe he was just like, he owed someone a favor or he was just passing for a couple Maybe, of days. Or... Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I just, yeah, you, this is something that you have to see. It's, it's so bad. That it's bad, but it's almost verging on good. Like, I want to say I enjoyed watching it, but I think it was because I was watching it with my friend and we knew how terrible it was. It'd be like watching Birdemic, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And believe it or not, the director actually went on to do The Howling 3 after this and he's still working today. And he has a documentary out next year that I will not be missing because, would you like to know the title? Yes, please. Go. Dracula Nazi Hunter or How I Learned to Love Christopher Lee and Drink Atomic Bombs. Brilliant. So he's basically going to explain how uh, how he got Christopher Lee to do that. Sign thing. me up. I think I'm so. In. Like it's, yep. it's an insane title, but I, all I can guess it's like about Christopher Lee's life because he did play Dracula. He was a Nazi hunter in World War II. I, I don't know if he drank atomic bombs, but he was pretty epic, <laughs> so maybe he did. Maybe. So yeah, that is my first film, Sturber Werewolf Bitch. Please check it out. <laughs> or don't. Suffer <laughs> yeah, through it. You, Suffer with me. If you don't want to actually subject yourself to watching the whole film, uh, there's mm -hmm. a YouTube channel called John Tron, and he does a good video of like covering how funny it is. He does, so, yeah. That was how yeah, I heard about it. You can watch a bit of that if you don't want to watch the entire film oh, because yeah. his video is much more bearable. <laughs> it is, yeah. But, I mean, that was what made me watch it, though. Like, so, like someone, I came across the video and then I sent it to Martin and he was like, I bought you a birthday present. And I was like, what is it? And he was like, I bought you Sturba <laughs> Werewolf Bitch. And I was like, oh no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to check that out. Thank you very much. Yeah, yes. I'm very tempted. You've you've not put me <laughs> off. <laughs> you've actually sold it to me. That's how positive we can be on Grief Burrito. We sell you the horrible, <laughs> horrible, painful things. <laughs> Nick, it is with you number four. Okay, number four for me is a comedy from 2006. It is called Idiocracy, directed by Mike Judge, who is famous for creating Beavis and Butthead. And Office Space, oh, right. which is a movie I really like. Office okay. Space is a great film. Um, and this stars Luke Wilson and Maya Rudolph. And the premise is, uh, Luke, let's say Luke Wilson plays a guy called Joe. Uh, he's chosen to be a guinea pig in a uh, hibernation experiment, basically. He wakes up 500 years later and he is suddenly the smartest man on the planet. <laughs> uh, basically because... Oh. <laughs> All the poor people in the world just keep on fucking 
and <laughs> the human race has become stupid. It is a cruel wow. <laughs> base. It is, it is a base, cruel, horrible movie. It's really nasty, um, and it, it's, it's got a really terrible message in that basically, yeah, um, we should sterilize all the poor people. And only the rich people should be allowed to reproduce. <laughs> wow! In order I was say, that's to quite like a classism-based thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think he's you know that he's trying to make some those sorts of statements, but it just really doesn't come a, a, across well at all. It, it's it's really nasty. Um, yeah, don't watch it. It's terrible. <laughs> I've never even heard of it. Oh, really? No. I, unbelievably, I just checked. It's like six point five on um, really IMDb, wow. which. I've, Absolutely I've actually seen this movie. Max, my gob. What? <laughs> Jordan, did you say you've seen it? I have. That's two films that you've seen and I've not seen so far. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it's not that you've not seen films, it's that you've not seen good films. You've only seen yes. bad films. Basically, yes. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin <laughs> the surprise. <laughs> that appears to be it. <laughs> but yeah, there was, um, there was maybe loads of, fun- like, loads of funding went into it from like huge companies within america i think like pepsi were in on it or something like that at one point yeah i and burger king and yeah then they saw the film and uh, the premise and were like nah fuck this <laughs> and just like pulled <laughs> out wow and I, I think you could have done some good things with that premise I, but yeah. i, I yeah. just think it misses the mark totally it's terry cruz kills it though that's literally the only redeeming feature is terry cruz beating some people up that's always good, though. Yeah, yeah. Which he doesn't make things good. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, Terry Crews is great in stuff. anything he's in. He's, That's he, very true. He's the only person who can make a uh, a deodorant advert good. Yeah. Yes. Like, I've never seeked out an advert to watch online other than <laughs> the fucking Terry Crews, what's it called, adverts? I can't remember the name of the deodorant. Old I just Spice. know it's him. Uh, <laughs> Spice, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so that that's that's my number four. Terrible film. Really? Jordan, <laughs> hit, you, hit me with your number yes. four. I have a question for you. Oh, question way. Is there anything that John Favreau can't adapt? Oh, possibly. Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Close. It's the it's the Jungle Book. Really? Oh, right. Yeah. I okay. hated that film. The the remake. That I is interesting. Hate it. I quite Why so? That. I've not seen it. <laughs> I quite liked it. That. Uh, that film, despite having like a really good cast and things like that, it absolutely stripped away anything that I actually liked about the original animated film. Yeah, that's fair. It's like the mm-hmm. main little kid was really annoying and a shit actor. <laughs> the CGI wasn't that good. And Baloo wasn't blue. He was a brown bear. True. And I was like, yes. what? What is this? <laughs> and it's just, I feel like, Disney, just on this subject, stop making live action reboots, please, <laughs> please. I think that's, that's they do need argument. to. They need, they do need to stop doing that. It's just but people yeah. keep going to see them. That's the Easy thing. That's the money problem. for people them. Yeah, them. it's it's yeah. crazy that we've come to that. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I've not seen it, but I, it's interesting. This is in your list because um, a few weeks ago, I, I went to. I thought, oh, should we put this on? And my wife said, no, I watched it with the kids. It is terrible. No, so, really? yeah. no way oh, oh wow, wow. <laughs> I, and, and, well, it's... yeah so that's interesting it's on your list as well because yeah, I, I love the original it's yeah it's, it's a classic so yeah, good. it's time i thought it was all right the remake i didn't I, think oh, yeah, it was particularly it. amazing uh the best yeah. bit is probably christopher walken as king louis <laughs> yeah but even i don't know even that it just kind of why oh, was it didn't make it good as well I don't know. Why was he huge? I don't what? know why he was huge. Why was he a giant all of a sudden? <laughs> Who? What? And it was uh, it was like, I feel like they need to stop as well putting famous people in there just for their names opposed to like their ability. Disney have yeah. Because yeah. Have, have you seen Beauty and the Beast? Yes. Yeah. It's like Emma Watson, as great as she is, she's not a great singer. <laughs> no. Hire no. a singer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let the films do what they're meant to do and leave like all the... I don't know politics out of it. I suppose just make make good film. Ignore people. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I think telling yeah. Disney to ignore politics is never going to happen. Why? Uh, no. uh, I meant all <laughs> the politics of. Yeah, I know. Yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize what I said. I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> I, I know someone who was a runner on Beauty and the Beast. Really? And, um, no way. 
there are some stories about some of the <laughs> really some of those cast members which I, we probably can't say on here just <laughs> just in case i'll tell you off there cool yeah we'll hang around <laughs> afterwards sweet <laughs> is it my turn i think it is i'm a bit worried about this one i think i'm oh, gonna no. catch some, oh, excellent i think i'm gonna catch some stick for this one um this is a really recent film it came out in 2018 it's one of the most boring experiences of my life. Um, if I could have oh. walked out of the cinema, I would have, but I've just got this thing where I'm not allowed to do that. It's, my head doesn't allow it. You have to stick with it. Yeah. Um, it's it's an Oscar winning. Oh. One of the ladies in it is Oscar, has won an Oscar for it. It's rated at 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb. And it's If Beale okay. Street Could Talk. I had, I've actually seen that. So I, I will so not I've give you that. I've heard of it. I've never seen it. It's hot garbage. Okay. What is the premise? The hottest. <laughs> Basically, a woman gets pregnant. Okay. Um, okay. During this time, her husband, boyfriend, lover goes to prison. And it's about her trying to prove his innocence whilst also being pregnant. That seems it's fucking cool enough. Boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a good premise. To be fair, that, that just sounds like a Manchester council estate, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's called If Beale Street Could Talk. It isn't set on Beale Street or anywhere near there. Right. Um pass why um there's a scene in it the guy is a wood what do you call a woodworker somebody makes things wood, out of wood a turner yeah, a carpenter make, yeah something a like that makes shit out of wood and there's a scene and he's a got woodist this, <laughs> he's a he's woodist a, monk he's a wooderer yes <laughs> <laughs> he's got this chunk of wood and he's and it's on a table oh, and he's looking at it for a good 10 minutes of the film and nothing else has happened and seriously 10 minutes you know exactly. no, it's not 10 minutes but it's probably five minutes and he's just looking at it and trying to imagine what he's going to make out of it. But that, and nothing happens. Is that because you're supposed to do that as the viewer? Possibly. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to see the art within. I hated. I, re- I hated it. I reckon he should make a table. What kind of <laughs> what kind of viewing experience is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Regina King won an Oscar for it for best supporting actress. Okay. Was she was she um, good? Is, are we finding anything redeeming here? There's yeah. I guess, well, she, she must have been. <laughs> she won an Oscar for it. She must have been. I, I just hated it. I, got, I, I remember coming out of the cinema going, that's two hours of my life. I'm never getting back. And yeah. It's just so boring. It's just, there's no, I've got no time for boring films. Okay. You've got to, I've got to be entertained Fair. by a film. And if I'm yeah. not. Well, that's yeah. what they're there for. They're entertainment. Exactly. It's and story I've, experience. People, some films get made sometimes just to try and grab awards. And if Beale Street yeah. Talk was definitely one of those. It, they were just trying to grab all the Oscars for that year. No way. Done. I'm finished. <laughs> I've ranted Done. about my Finished. number four. <laughs> Fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it me next? Is it my go? It is, yes. Yeah. So my next film is a movie that I really struggle to find the name of because <laughs> I watched it so long ago and I went through, I was just Googling, so I went through The House on Haunted Hill, The House at the End of the Street, The House at the End of the Street on the Haunted Hill. And then I finally (laughs) came up with it two days ago, just like out of the blue. It just randomly popped into my head and it is The House by the Cemetery. Have any of you seen it? No. 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 Okay. So (laughs) this is from uh, 1981 and it was directed by Lucio Fulci, who people in the horror circles will know he's known for like his weird like B-movie horror stuff. He's known for making not the best films. Uh, I watched this film way too young, like late primary school, early high school, uh, like the whole wow. Robocop thing we've spoken about, uh, guys, you know, everyone always watches the films sure. too young like that. And in tone, it's it feels similar to Hellraiser. Have, have, have all of you seen Hellraiser? Yes. No. <laughs> okay. That's something we need to watch. No surprises there. No, no. I like. I, I know that Jordan <laughs> hasn't seen it and I want us to do that one. Maybe we'll do it next Halloween when we watch horror films again or something like that. So it, it, um, that's a good f- idea because it doesn't hold up and it's quite funny to watch now. It is, yeah, it's yeah. It's not a good film. <laughs> it's not the best. It's. I like some of the effects in it. Like Hellraiser is impressive for its practical effects. Just like that, the skeleton. I, I, don't, I don't want to say too much in case people, yeah, like yeah. Jordan hasn't seen it. I'd like I to get his like, premise. It's a. I'm not even going to talk about it. Well, it, okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so this film is like it. It feels like that. It feels like a lower budget horror movie where it's trying to be practical effects. Except this film is totally batshit weird. <laughs> from what I remembered, and I, I had to go back and watch some of the scenes from it to try and fill in the gaps in my head because I'm, I'm talking. I must have been, I don't know, ten, eleven. So we're talking a long time ago. So there's a guy called 
Dr. Fulchstein or something, who is a weird doctor who lives underneath like a large style Victorian house. And people are moving into this house for some reason. I didn't watch it again, so I don't know why. And he's basically using people's body parts to extend his life. So he like cuts them up and adds them to his body. So like it's already quite a grim concept. And the opening scene is pretty notorious because a girl goes down into the basement and it's the proper like typical, oh, I'm the babysitter. I'm going to go down in the basement. Oh, I'm dead. You know, it's just like, (laughs) it's that. And she gets stabbed through the back of the head after seeing a zombie and the knife like comes out of her mouth. And it's just like, what? What is happening in this movie? And later on when someone's down there, someone sees eyes out the darkness and it's like these cartoony yellow glowing eyes. And on, on the case for the, that the poster for the movie, you can see that there's this weird doctor guy holding a knife. So you're supposed to make the connection that that is this guy, presumably. Okay. <laughs> but then when you see him at the end, he doesn't even have eyes. He's got like stitched up <laughs> weird zombie holes. And it's just the weirdest thing. The guy gets attacked by a bat and it sticks on his hand and you can tell that he's just like strapped to his hand and he stabs it with a pair of scissors and he's just like whapping his hand about. I just, and there's a little kid called, we thought he was called Ba because that's what it sounds like they call him and he's got a giant big head. I, I just, uh, I'm lost for words so, so how like bad a, this movie is. So it's like a proper 80s video nasty type thing. Yeah, it's a, a splatterhouse film. It literally is in the splatterhouse genre. But the way that it's done, like some of the practical effects are actually quite good. And even watching it back, it's very gory. And I was kind of impressed. But there's some like seriously cheesy moments. Like there's a bit where an, a, a hand holding a knife comes out of the darkness towards a screaming woman. And it's like, it films it. like It's like the typical, the final girl, you know, in the film thing where it's like a girl screaming and then, you know, like Jason chasing her kind of style. But the hand is moving so slowly towards her, like in a first person thing. And it just rubs the knife across her neck on both sides. And then her head rolls down the stairs <laughs> at, at Bar's feet. And then the little kid Bard tries to get away screaming and squeezes his massive melon through a crack in a gravestone and <laughs> manages to get away from this weird doctor thing and i yeah i need you to watch the trailer for it guys or watch a scene from it this was the one i was going to send you the other day awesome you i don't know yes. if you know this already I, I just just done a quick uh a quick google it's the third in a trilogy it is yes <laughs> it is so and the th- worst apparently oh wow jesus <laughs> also just- craig left yeah, Craig's fucked off again. Fuck him. Um, I've just <laughs> I've just brought it up on IMDb as well, and apparently it was banned in the UK until 1988. And oh, wow, okay. It wasn't rated until 2001, where a heavily cut version was rated an 18, and then it was re-rated later on as an, in the un- uncut version as an 18. Oh, how did you get your hands on that as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends' mum and dad had it on video, oh. and we just watched it. I I think it is a dub, so I presume it because of the it's director's Italian, French. Is it Italian? Yeah, right, according right. to IMDb, it's Italian. Apparently, the, the VHS as well. The movie reels were put in the wrong order, so it doesn't make any sense. According <laughs> no, to no, it, trivia. <laughs> it it does. It was just really strange, and yeah, I don't know. It why, just stuck with me, and it's a film I've always thought about, but couldn't remember the name till the other day. Why do I want to watch all of the films that you're talking about? <laughs> why is this? Happening? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need to experience their grit with me. There's a bit where the zombie guy gets stabbed and all this like shitty maggoty goo comes out of his stomach and it's like actual maggots crawling on the knife. And it, oh. ugh, yeah, it's real grit. I, I actually got a like a bit sick. esque Yeah, it kind of feels that way. It does, but way worse. 6.2 okay. on IMDb. Really? Yeah. Maybe we'll have to do a movie night and watch it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. I'll jump on the Discord and I'll watch it at the same time. We'll all go three, two, one, go, or three, two, go, as Jordan likes to do. <laughs> no, I, I go one, two, three, and we go on three. Why? Wait, no, I do don't. Wait, no, I don't. <laughs> now you're Wait, confusing do I? yourself. I forgot how I count. <laughs> I've ah. forgotten how to count. You're thinking about it. Read, you I just need to count. do it. <laughs> uh, good choice. Next. Good choice. Thank you. Top three, Nick. Hit us with your third. Okay, I. I'm interested to see what you two uh, burrito boys think of this because you're a bit younger than us. You might have a bit of a different view. I'm going Star Wars. I'm going prequel trilogy. I'm going Attack of the Clones. Wow. 
It is a terrible movie. It's <laughs> so boring. And I think that is it possibly is. the worst crime that it commits. Yeah. Um, again, I, I actually watched a couple of sequences uh, in the build up to this and I hadn't really noticed before, but you know, I've not looked, not looked at it for a while. The, the scene at the end when like the clone army comes together, it yeah. just looks like a cartoon. It does. The CGI is awful. It, it, like, it is really, like, really bad. Yeah, it is like they've just dropped a scene from a cartoon in there. And it, I just don't, I, from what I've seen, it, it doesn't look like it's aged well. I'm, I'm not keen to no, go and watch no. the whole two and a half hours in a hurry. I must it's say. even to the point where, like, the background scenes, like, the characters, you know, like the actual actors are stood on an entire blue screen. Yeah. And they drop the actors into blue screen scenes. So even the they don't look like they're on the floor. Yeah. The shadows don't match with the floor. The backgrounds are all weird perspective. It's just it's fucking awful. <laughs> I, I yeah, we might seem a, a bit of a theme of my uh, list as we move on, but that that sort of for something that was supposed to be such a leap forward in technology. Yeah. Uh, it does not look good compared to something like, like I don't know, the Abyss which is a uh, you know 20 years further back but still looks pretty yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Um, like if you look at the the only redeeming quality of the attack of the clones is probably the lightsaber fight between Anakin and Dooku. And it's when they actually have practical, practical glowing lightsabers and they're fighting in the yeah. dark. Cause that's the first time they did that with actual glowing lights. As far I, as I'm aware. Anyway, I, I've just realized, as you've said that Christopher Lee is also in this film. <laughs> I did as well. He's also in that film. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a bit where they're like Anakin and Padme are frolicking in the field and he's he's riding some kind of like booking space cow. and It looks like a tick. <laughs> it, it looks, again, it just looks so bad. It's boring. It, the love story is appalling. Yeah. Yes. The dialogue's terrible. broken heart, Nick. Well, I've actually got a couple. She legitimately <laughs> apparently <laughs> yeah, dies of a broken heart. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's science, baby. I've I've actually got a couple of scenes, Ad, if you want to role play. Oh, yeah, let's do it. A bit of dialogue. Do it, yes. <laughs> wow. Is this what you texted me earlier? It is. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to read. Would you, would you like to be Anakin or Padme? Padme. Okay. This feels slightly worse. <laughs> How, like, straight to it, Adam like was it. then? <laughs> Padme. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, think about it if you need to, you know, come on. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I can't read it. It's too small. Hold on. <laughs> you can zoom. I've got to have glasses on Saturday. Oh, have you? Yeah. I'll hold it closer. Oh, you're getting like get a monocle. <laughs> well, I'll only be able to see out of one eye. I get two a, monocles. I need a bionicle. <laughs> <laughs> right, have you got it? I've got it. Okay, so just just a couple of uh, of exchanges which which George Lucas and whoever else doctored this script are, tr- are trying to get across this uh, star-crossed love story. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm already I'll, laughing at it. <laughs> I'll be Anakin. Go for it. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid to die. I've been dying a little bit each day since you came back into my life. What are you talking about? I love you. You love me? I thought we had decided not to fall in love. That we'd be forced to live a lie and that it would destroy our lives. I think our lives are about to be destroyed anyway. I truly, deeply love you. And before we die, I want you to know. <laughs> Fucking hell. Wow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the next, we'll just do the next one because this is my favourite one. Well, this is like a fucking monologue. What's going on? <laughs> no, the second one. The little, there's just two lines. I've only got two. I've only got this one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. Yep. Go for it. We used to come here for a school retreat. We would swim to that island every day. I love the water. We used to lie out on the sand and let the sun dry us and try to guess the names of the birds singing. Oh. I don't like sand. <laughs> it's, it's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere not like here here everything is soft and smooth Jesus. wow that's one of my favorite lines ever the thing see, he, is, he totally it's failed on the pickup line <laughs> he's in it the way he says it as well yeah. Nick's it is, expressive yeah. <laughs> he is not that's brilliant I don't want to be too harsh on Hayden Christensen either but because I think he was just sold an absolute hospital pass with him oh yeah back, the script's it? awful he is the coming back is yeah. Awful. yeah he is coming back yeah so yeah. you know maybe he'll do a bit better but it's it's bad it's really bad I, agree. I couldn't agree more it's no fun and that's the worst <laughs> no I, I was I gonna say agree. he totally missed up on a a perfect like chat up line for Padme at that point because he said hey baby I want to be sand I want to get everywhere (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I agree with him though. I hate sand for that exact reason. Oh yeah, sand, I am yeah. Darth Vader. sand sucks. It's logic right. sound, but there's a time and a place, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, there is. There definitely is. <laughs> Such a fucking downer, Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my number three. Attack cool. of the Clones. Jordan, what's your number Put three? You out. My number three is from 2019, Ooh. so it's a pretty recent one. It's 6.3 on IMDb, and it has Mads Mikkelsen in it. Do any of you know what this film is? No. Is it Polar? It is Polar. Well played. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Thank it, you. It's on Netflix, but I've not watched it. It is. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it struck from the list. <laughs> was it? I think it was on the long list at one point. It may have been. I think it was on the podcast mm. list. Tell us about Polar. I heard it was all right. I was on a real Mads Mikkelsen hype at one point. <laughs> We've all been there. Like, he's going to... He's going to be, yeah, we have, <laughs> if you've not been, you're weird. <laughs> so he was, I think I knew he was going to be in Death Stranding. And I like the character of Clint, who he plays. And I was like, that's cool as shit. And the movie looked interesting. I like violence and nudity as much as the next guy, yeah. Probably more. But there's a, if, <laughs> probably more. <laughs> Conjoined <laughs> at the hip. But it's just too much. And it's like, it was just the overuse of gore. There was like a torture scene. There's a complete lack of coherence in the plot. It just really? didn't make any sense in places. There's no likable characters. Shit just happened for no reason <laughs> at all. <laughs> and it felt more like a fever dream than a film, if I'm honest with you. Because <laughs> I was just, I didn't understand. And when it ends, I wasn't any, I didn't know any more than I went in with. I was like, what happened? It's just <laughs> fucking weird. It does look terrible, I, I must admit. I think that's shot. probably why I ended I up on that list at cool. one point. He's got an Doesn't eye patch in it, hasn't Mads he? getting like cool. a, a prostate exam. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Doesn't it start with Mads Mikkelsen getting a prostate exam? Now you say it, it does sound familiar. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. Jordan thought that was so I'm, sure, I'm sure my dad was watching it and I walked in and I was like, what are you watching? <laughs> By the end, and that's how Uncut Gem starts. To be fair, that's but, oh, really? by all. the end of it, you thought you'd had one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was. Yeah, it wasn't great. I so yeah, I had like the makings of a good film in there, but there were just bits where I was like, "Why have you added this? Why? Why have you done this? Why? Why did Mads Mikkelsen shoot a helpless animal by mistake? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> then why? Then why does he buy another animal? What the fuck? <laughs> I won't watch it. <laughs> I'll, I'll strike it from my list. Strucken. Strucken. Replace Strucken. it with House by the Strucken. Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely going to watch House by the Cemetery. Yep. I'll get that sorted. We'll, we'll sort that out. To watch the trilogy. I'm glad I didn't have to read the director's name, actually, to be fair. Why, what is it? Well, is now it? you've just set yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> I know, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Jonas Uckerland, I believe. I don't know how to... It's an A with a circle over it. Alkaland. Uckerland. <laughs> Uckerland. <laughs> And it'll also be Jonas, not Jonas. Jonas Euclid. That's probably exactly yes. how it's pronounced. Spot on. It is. <laughs> Either that or I'm going to get some angry tweets. <laughs> Shout out to the Swedish <laughs> listeners. <laughs> right, I'll go for my number three. And talking Let's of directors it. with very difficult names to pronounce, um, this film is by M. Night Sh- Shahalimalaman. <laughs> who Shalimalan. is one of the worst film directors of all time. It's from 2004. It's rated highly. It's rated at 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb. And it is The Village. I was going to say, it's going to be Thank The Village. shit you yeah. said 2004, because I've got a film verse from 2010. <laughs> 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 the Village is appalling. Yeah, it's bad. It's a terrible, terrible mm, film. It's bad. It's, it's not entertaining. It's not fun. He, he feels like he has to put a twist at the end of every one of his films. And he does, it's yeah. It's the most bolted on twist of all time. And mm-hmm. it's just a terrible film. It's got an all-star cast. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's Bryce Dallas Howard. I think it was her first ever role. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, Adrian Brody, William Hurt, Shigoni Weaver, Brendan Gleeson. It's massive. The cast is massive. Yeah, and the film is appalling. I actually went to the cinema to see it with our friend Wayne. Yeah, and as it finished, he stood up in front of the whole cinema and went, "What the fuck was that?" In front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Which still to this day makes me laugh. It's one of the funniest things he's ever done. Um, yeah, it's awful. And I, I d- implore everybody to never watch any of his films. Yeah. I, I like the that. monster designs that you kind of see. Yeah, but you only barely see them. I know, but that's what makes them cool. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, it's terrible. It's an awful film. 
Uh, how it's rated so highly on IMDb is beyond. How high did you say? Six point five. That surprises me. Yeah, because I, I have seen I've seen it not for many years, but it's it's always been within my frame of reference and from reading and just whenever it does pop up is that this is shit. Yeah. So I'm really surprised it's that high. He had all that sex. Yeah. All that. All that sex. <laughs> <laughs> he had all that Probably success did. with um. And the six, six cents. So six cents, then unbreakable. Yeah, the was, six cents. Was the village is third. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I think that came third. The six cents. Obviously Maybe it's because the, the reviews the are end. riding high. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, they were just, yeah. at that point in time. People were just throwing money at him, and it was like yeah. make a film with a twist at the end because you did so well with the six cents, and mm-hmm. he came up with a village. And I'm pretty I've sure I've never even heard of this film. Don't don't watch it. Really? <laughs> if Jordan's got one on his list as well, I know what it's going to be. Well, and I think I've right got to have it on there. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is a terrible film, and but weirdly, I think you could have an argument for saying it's not even his worst film. No, it's probably <laughs> no, not. No, not at all. No. You know, Apparently, if, his new series is very good, the one that's on Apple TV. Yeah, I've heard that's supposed to be good. I don't mm-hmm. feel like I need to give him any more of my attention. No, no I understand. <laughs> <laughs> there was the one he did when he went a bit, um, he went a bit low key a few years ago. It was the one that's in the lift. That's all right. It's not great. Oh, devil. Devil? devil. Devil's all right. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. That's on Netflix as well. Is it? it was. Oh, okay. It might have just got removed. Talking of films that have been... Like, I'm sorry, think... going off on the tangent. Bait has been removed from Netflix. <laughs> oh, has it? Which was our second ever film that we did. Oh, it was released yesterday. Supermarket Sharks. Yesterday. Yeah, the Supermarket Sharks. So just Supermarket it, Sharks. <laughs> Do you feel like with the Devil one, because they said there was, obviously, it's M. Night Shyamalan, there's going to be a twist. Like, do you not think that film is a bit too obvious because of the scope of it, what the twist was going to be? Yeah, probably. You knew, you always knew what the twist was going to be. You just didn't know who it was going to be. But I, I feel like you would, though, because it's going to be a twist and, like, subvert expectations. Yeah. For anyone who's not seen it, spoilers. <laughs> uh, it's the old woman. I've never <laughs> seen it. And as soon as someone said, yeah, it's about these people in a lift and there's, like, an old woman and, like, this person, that person, I was like, it's the old woman. <laughs> Straight up, obviously, <laughs> it's going to be the old woman. I, I get what you're saying, but I, I, I suppose what I'm saying, it, it didn't totally shit on the whole thing, so I didn't really yeah. mind too much. We see loads, oh, okay. we see loads of movies uh, on this show that just stick a twist in, or five or six, yeah. and they add nothing <laughs> to it. And you're just like, I, just, I didn't need any of that. Just tell me the story and it yeah. would have been good enough to get through. And actually, you're making me hate it. It's not just twist uh, either, it's gimmicks. I don't mind it being a predictable twist <laughs> yeah. if it ties the thing together. If the, if the I, story can yeah, carry it. it executes it well, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Who's next? Harrison. Is it me? Yeah. It's me, isn't it? It yes, is you. It's me. There's only four of us. It shouldn't so, be hard to figure out. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my next film is... A Nicolas Cage film. What? Yes. <laughs> I don't dare, like Nicolas dare. Cage. <laughs> okay, look, <laughs> nobody likes Nicolas Cage. Really. Just throw a dart and you could hit a bad <laughs> Nicolas Cage film. So I'm interested exactly, to see yeah, which you one could you're hit any of them. Uh, my one is from 2009 and is directed by Alex Proyas. Does anybody know it? It could be one of a number of things. No. And what I say, Ghost Rider? I don't know. The National no, Treasure. it's knowing. Alex Proyas directed iRobot, didn't he? Amongst other things, I believe. Oh my God, was that him? I think so. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex Press. I Robot was good, but knowing is absolute shat. Oh yes, yes. So is. this movie starts okay, <laughs> and that is already surprising to me. <laughs> I remember sitting down and getting like, I got about halfway through it, and I was like, this isn't that bad. But Nicolas Cage is awful still, and I was tolerating it because the film had an interesting concept. So for any listeners who haven't seen it, and any of you guys who haven't seen it, uh, Nicolas Cage is a widower, and he becomes obsessed with deciphering a code that he finds inside a time capsule. And it's just a code of loads of numbers. And he realizes that it actually predicts disaster dates, followed by the amount of people who die in each disaster along with, a th- I can't remember if it's where the disaster takes place as well, like a coordinate, but it's something like that because they happen all around him. Otherwise, it's just a weird coincidence that it's all just where he is. And that's quite a cool concept that it could predict this kind of thing. However, Cage just cages it up <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> There's a montage scene, I don't know if you guys remember it, where he realises what the code is and it's just so bad. There's He's 
he rips a whiteboard down off a wall and then like scatters his his work, his books and everything on the floor to get the whiteboard onto a table. But the way he sort of scatters it is like his motions don't fit the action what he's doing. He's just like bleh, like just sort of <laughs> flobs it off onto the floor. Whereas the like epic music and cut camera scenes are like cutting close to all different things and he's just sort of hamming it about. And then when he realizes what it is, it zooms in on him and it does that thing where it's like, oh my God. And he drops a glass and it smashes on the floor. <laughs> and it's just him going to all these places, trying to find these disasters and to try and stop them or see if this theory is correct. And there's a scene with a jet. Do you remember this at all, Adam? Yeah. So he goes to, it's like a crash on a highway, isn't it? Yeah. And he runs over to the police to say, like, oh my God, is everyone all right? Because this is where this disaster should be. But only like a couple of people got hurt. So it's not the 300 people who should have died. And then all of a sudden, a passenger <laughs> jet just fucking falls out of the sky and slices across the road and blows up, killing hundreds. Because, you know, who could have fucking guessed? Yeah, why not? And like, that was the bit where I was like, okay, that was a bit, this is a bit much. This is a bit silly now. And then three quarters of the way through the film, there's some weird people that just start staring in through his kids' windows at night. And I'm like, okay, this is getting... What? What? What is happening? And then suddenly at the end, spoilers for the knowing, everyone, you're about to know the knowing, <laughs> the people are aliens and they take his kids to a space paradise <laughs> while the world ends. <laughs> And I just sat there like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> the ending is just a combination of Cage. It just And that stuck in my head. And ah, oh, I watched her awful. feeling like I had been cheated. I, In the words of Jordan, I was like, how fucking dare you put me through that? <laughs> it's highly rated as well. 6.2 on IMDb, that one. No. Yeah. How? How is it rated that? The ending just negates everything. It's so out of the blue. Let me let something I have learned from this experience is check Metacritic before <laughs> IMDb. Yeah, because they're all sort of in this sort of yeah. six to seven range, aren't they? Which is really surprising. I'm gonna throw this one at you. So um Alex uh pray us his three movies yeah. before knowing. So his first movie he directed was The Crow, nineteen ninety four. Wow. Great film. Wow. Second movie. Holy shit, no way. Second movie he directed, 1998, Dark City. Great film. Really good movie. Also a good film. Third movie, I, Robot. <laughs> and then Knowing. And then oh, Knowing. <laughs> Has he done anything? And then since? Knowing? Yeah. <laughs> What's he done since? Uh, so he directed in 2016, so he had seven years off after Knowing. Nobody would have him. <laughs> Not surprised. And 2016, he directed Gods of Egypt. Uh, which that was, was fucking awful. A historical <laughs> epic. I don't think I've seen I've this. Seen that one. So it's Gerard I... Butler, Chadwick Boseman, Jeffrey Rush. Oh my god! Yeah, and the guy who plays Jamie Lannister. Yes, Nikolai Costa. Who is like, but he's a giant in it. Everyone else is normal size, and he's a god who is giant. <laughs> like he is like twenty five foot tall, and it's so off putting in scenes. <laughs> I, I actually forgot about that film. It is that bad. I wish that was on my list. How did he have such a fall from grace from three great films to two terrible ones? Uh, uh, Gods of Egypt was nominated for a Golden Raspberry for Worst Picture. It did not win. <laughs> well, it can't be that bad. Then. He was also sure nominated enough. for Worst Director. That is quite the filmography. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'll answer your question, Adam. Drugs are one hell of a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm sure. Yeah. They are. Have you heard about this... Uh, TV show that Cage has got on Netflix that's come in. We mentioned it last week on the show. Yes. The history of Is swear it the one where... Yes, yeah, it's I did hear you so saying about fun. that. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait for it. I'll check that out. I will check that out. That's just that's just going to be Cage being Cage. Nicholas Cage, yeah. documentarian. Yeah. And he's also <laughs> playing Tiger King, don't forget, in the yeah, dramatization. Yeah, that's true. That'll be his, his first TV acting role. Good times. What are we up to? Are we up to number two? Number two. Wow. Yeah. Nick, what's your number two? I'm taking a big boy down. Oh. This Ooh. this movie I am for my number two as well. Was nominated for Best Picture. Wow. And Best Director. <laughs> wow. In two thousand and seven. Okay. I want someone to convince me why this shouldn't be on my list, because <laughs> I think it's fucking terrible. Uh Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Well, it basically is just Pocahontas. Yeah. It's it's Pocahontas, it's Fern Gully, it's got an absolute paper-thin story, 
I did not find any originality to it. I remember walking out of this and thinking, yeah, it looked nice. But why, <laughs> yeah, it's why, style, is, no why is this busting records all <laughs> over the world? Because I don't get it. Yeah, And I've watched it a couple of times since because I wanted to give it another chance. And I still don't get it. No. Yeah. Wow. I've Way only seen it long as well. I've seen it once and it was in 3D IMAX and it was an experience. I think I was with you. Yeah, I think you probably yeah. were. But that's mm-hmm. the only time I've seen it. But I remember, I don't remember it being, I know it's bad, but I don't remember it being that bad. I, I, I just thought it was derivative, a com- just a horribly commercial, just, oh, I, I, yeah, no fun <laughs> whatsoever. I, it boggles my mind that there are four sequels coming. Yeah, that's true. There Who's asking indeed. for them? Yeah. 13 they years have been later. For like 10 years, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 13 years. But James Cameron has to I invent the technology to was make a kid. the film, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't he? He does. Avatar was basically made to sell 3D TVs, yeah, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. That's it was great. sponsored by like Sony, Samsung, Toshiba, and LG. Yeah. Here's a load of money. Like Let's make a great 3D film. Oh my God, we need the x file sound. Stick it in there. <laughs> and I was thinking about this again over the last couple of days as I was prepping for this. And, and I was thinking, you don't see it referenced really i know they've they've like bunged up a theme park haven't they at disney world with yeah. a, avatar yeah, rides yeah. and stuff which is probably quite a good match but it's not like you see avatar merch when you're walking around any comic cons or you know it doesn't it's seem true, yeah, it's yeah. just not in pop culture for the biggest film of all time or it was for 10 years till till marvel took over avengers yeah, yeah. It's What's true. It's that's cultural a, impact. That's a very good point. That is a very good that point. That is a really good point. Hey, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jordan think alike. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it is. <laughs> You're right. There's never been any like top line merch. You don't see people. Yeah, at people don't stuff, talk about it, and I don't no, think right. it's held in that high regard. No, but people. I. I. Yeah. Not not for me. It is a really generic film. To be fair, when you think about it, is aliens fighting dudes with guns. There's nothing like memorable there. Right. Give me an Ewok but, over a <laughs> Pandoran. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, my favourite thing about that film is the material they're trying to get. Un- yeah. Oh, the unobtainium. Un- unobtainium. <laughs> Fucking hell, guys. That's the, That's the best you could come shit. up with. <laughs> the funniest shit in the world. But other than that, it's, I enjoyed it when I was I watched it in the cinema because I was 14. All so, right. you know, my stuff. expectations were pretty low. Yeah. That wasn't that wasn't a dig at your guy's age. Well, it sounded however. like one. Uh, <laughs> I didn't take it as one. Someone's obviously more sensitive. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the oldest. Yeah, I'm allowed I'd to be sensitive. Enjoyed it. I think the action scenes were really interesting and how they interacted with the environment around them, the Pandorans. That and being able to transfer consciousness through to a Tree. body like mm. the Animus. Yeah, that was like in Assassin's Creed. I thought it was pretty cool. That, that's not. But yeah, the, looking the, back, there's a decent idea there. I agree, but the, yeah, I I just think it's it's all style. It's no substance whatsoever. And if that's I what think you're it trying was to a make, bit wank, fine. Is what you're trying to yeah. say? <laughs> I think it was overtly <laughs> sexual, personally, like linking your hair penis with a that's a, true a horse's hair penis, and then with yeah. your girlfriend's hair penis. It's true. He didn't even wash his hair penis between. <laughs> that's asking for hair barnacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't drag them barnacles on your hair penis. Oh, I should have gone with hair peas. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'll edit it. I was going to go for hair fillis. Oh, hair fillis, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll edit it in. I'll make you sound good, don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got <laughs> split <laughs> ends, Jesus. <laughs> oh, shit. Fucking hell. No, that's Ross about Cook, dandruff. Ross Cook's going to draw a split end and I'm not going to be able to sleep for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Why would you even say that? Edit that out. <laughs> Um, Ross Cook is a deviant. Yeah, I know. He needs locking up. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I would, I would be really interested to see how much money four sequels make because I'm not sure there's the audience are crying out for four Avatar right. movies. No. I think you're right. I can't see we'll them being see. like hugely successful. The second will come out, and then that'll be it. I'm calling it <laughs> Brito prediction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's my number two Avatar. Yeah, it is a number two. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, hit me with your Jordan two. slappers with the R's. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you should say that because it's Planet of the Apes. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it is a piece of shit, though. So it's between two, and I think I know which one's going to be in second. So it's another M. Night Shyamalan movie. Mm-hmm. It is from 2010. It's got a 4.0 on IMDb, which is too high. <laughs> 
It is the it's the last Airbender. I was gonna say Avatar, Avatar. Was the last Airbender, but <laughs> that's yeah. the correct. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a bad film. I th- it's just disappointing. Like, have you guys seen the Avatar Last Airbender like animated series? I've, I've seen yeah. a few, but I would like to to properly watch it because I've heard so how highly regarded it is yeah. held. Yeah, it's supposed to be yes. great. So I'd only watched a few episodes here or there when I'd watched this film. Um, and even after just that, I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, it it just like, for, for people who don't know, the plot is there's a little kid who's the last of his kind and he's found in like a ball of ice and yada, yada, yada. He can control all the elements and he's the last airbender and everyone else either can't do shit or they can control one. Yeah. That is a lot to go over in one film. So basically, <laughs> you see the water people, one air person, and fire people. They miss out an entire like social structure. They miss out everything. <laughs> it's just meant to be some like cash grabby action film. And it's it's like the Disney films. They didn't need to make it. They could have just left it because the cartoon was absolutely great. It nails everything it's meant to. And the cartoon for me is like above Toy Story and like Lilo and Stitch in terms of like my favorite animated awesome. things. Wow. Because it's just so good. But yeah, it focuses on like a really shitty bit and just adds bits that aren't necessary. Like, oh, these people can't make fire with their hand, like without there being fire nearby. And it's like, yes, they can. What the fuck? What? <laughs> they just add <laughs> random shit like that that doesn't make any sense to kind of, I suppose, elevate the risk. Yeah. I've um, mm. that, I'd, I've I've never seen it, yeah. but it's always been one of these ones where I've I've looked at it a couple of times and gone, I've heard this is bad. I want to find out if it's <laughs> as bad <laughs> as they say it is. Yeah. But I, I've never took the plunge. I've say. never seen it either because it, I don't. No, like it. I know. Got, there's a line in there. One of the characters there, says, yeah. "Bring bring me your elderly," doesn't he? I think he might. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. but I've repressed it. But he, uh, the it's got something that's like really close to just like killing a film for me which is annoying child actor syndrome (laughs) yeah Yeah. this is very much subject to that there's nothing good about this film at all nothing there's um there's a there's a famous it has been gift but there's there's a bit of a video that i remember seeing it's dev patel so he's on the red carpet at the premiere of this movie i've seen this yeah and he (laughs) Uh, a, a, a girl asks him for his autograph so he's, he's moving down the line signing autographs and he stops signs one of them and just says I'm sorry we've made a piece of shit movie <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> and that's coming from a guy who wasn't like a film star at that point he'd only really done Slum Dog Millionaire hadn't he? Uh, that's, that's yeah that's crazy oh, wow. that we actually thinking about it as well a, um, a few months ago we did mention I remember on one of our news sections that Netflix are looking at doing an adaptation yeah I saw that but they are, uh, yeah. But the fans are already up in arms because the the two guys who were whether they created it or they were they were heavily involved with the original animation have dropped off the Netflix adaptation. Yeah. Due to creative differences already. Yeah. <laughs> so uh we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like it's yeah. gonna be good yeah. times. Doesn't it's it? an amazing show, is what you should take away from this. And the sequel show, um, Legend of Core is also really good. So yeah, I watched them all recently. Watch that instead of the film. So that's what you instead of the film. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> straight up. Fair. Good choice. Right. Shall I go for my number two? Yeah. Choose. Uh, <laughs> See choose, you later. Choose a film that's <laughs> choose a film that's not called Avatar. I'll try my best. Um, you took down a big director for your number two. I'm taking down maybe the biggest director. I'm going. I'm taking Spielberg down with me for this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, this is a film from 2005, um, and it's Munich. Okay. It's light. <laughs> it's not light. <laughs> it's really not light. It's a true story. I don't. Have you guys seen it? No. 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 You're probably not old enough. It's on for nearly three hours. Um, oh shit! <laughs> yeah. It's a, my millennial attention span can't deal with that shit. <laughs> it's a true story about the aftermath of the Israeli Olympic team getting massacred in Munich, and then it's like fucking hell. Yeah, which did happen, and it's a true story. Um. This is a true story following the people who were going in after the terrorists that did it. Okay. It's on for two hours and 44 minutes. It's Eric Banner and Daniel Craig. Okay. Daniel Craig's 
Okay. One of the worst actors in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> I hate Daniel Craig. He's not great. He's not great. He's so overrated. Mm-hmm. He ruined Knives Out. Knives Out's a great film, but his accent Apart in that from film when he ruins up. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's good in Defiance, I suppose. <laughs> but that's another really grim film. The Munich is really grim. There's nothing fun about it. It's hard. It's a hard watch. All well, that's the way by through. design. It is, yeah, completely by design. But it's on for nearly three hours, <laughs> and it's too much. It's it's too dark. On IMDb, it's rated at seven point five. So I might be wrong. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> but okay, that's your experience of it. You we can't. I remember going to the cinema that. to see it and not realizing at the time that it was on for that long. And just being in pain by the end of it, but yeah, I, I, it's not a good film at all. It's that's why nobody remembers it. It's a Spielberg <laughs> film that nobody knows it even exists, and that's got to say it all, surely. No way. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. There you go. Oh, you oh, I've never <laughs> seen it. Yeah, I've, I'm aware of its existence, but I've never seen and it. And Steven Spielberg directed it, and sure. none of the three of you have ever even heard of it. That's it. That surely says it yeah. all <laughs> of how bad it is. Definitely does. <laughs> there. Anyway, that's my number two. Cool choices. Good shout. Good shout. I know, these are some brutal ones. <laughs> oh, My, I uh, brutal when I want <laughs> Yeah, we know that. We know that. And we love it. We love that. <laughs> My number two is, yeah, I, I struggled because I, I'm pretty, I give a lot of things a pass because <laughs> I'm, I'm quite up on things like I, I try to look on the on the brighter side of stuff but yeah. there's these last two films were the only ones that I could sort of pull out of my childhood <laughs> um now this film was from 2003 and is directed by Robert Rodriguez oh, wow. yes <laughs> this is Spy Kids 3D <laughs> game over wow <laughs> Now, okay. Robert Rodriguez, for any listeners who recognize the name, this is the same guy who produced all the From Dust Till Dawn movies, as well as the series, Death Proof, Grindhouse, Planet Terror, the new Predators film, and Machete, and also Sin City. So why the fuck he is making Spy <laughs> Kids? I have no idea who thought, yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy for this. He, he did all the Spy Kids films, and to be honest, I... I remember liking the first one, I, you know, because I was I was a kid. It was like it's out when I was sort of early high school, I think. So I remember me and my little brother watching it, and like Alan Cummings is in it, and he's a great actor. I think he's brilliant. Yeah, he is. But this one is just a whole level of garbage. It is <laughs> set when the the this is in quotes the underage agents. That's from straight from the IMDb I read before. Uh, journey into what they are calling a mind-blowing mission inside a virtual reality world in a 3D video game. And obviously the bad guy is sliced alone. Obviously. <laughs> why is he in this? Yeah. Wow. I don't know why. He's called the toy maker. And he's basically catching secret agents in this weird virtual world so he can get out. And I'm not sure why or how that happens. Uh, George Clooney also has a cameo in this. He is the president. Wow. <laughs> Just, yeah. All-star cast. The C- it really is. And like Antonio Banderas is the dad. <laughs> and this, the CGI in this film, I, I, if you have a phone handy, please just look up Spy Kids 3D Game Over. I, I want you guys to just see. And I'll explain to the listeners exactly what it's like. It oh, honestly looks like <laughs> something from fucking Blue's Clues. It is... It's so, so bad. The costumes are absolutely awful as well. I don't know who thought it was a good idea or how they got away with this. It feels like the producers never got to see this project until it was in the cinema because it would have been stopped. I think the studio... It's like like Power Rangers stuff. Oh, it is. It's like, it looks worse than the Power Rangers movie Megazords. Like there is no normal maps. I'm looking at, I can't believe... Well, um, really yeah, fancy. there's no, we'll get, there's we'll no depth. In the Discord. Yeah, I'll put some in the Discord. All the textures are flat. It's like old PlayStation One graphics, but really smooth. Worse. Like <laughs> shit. He was, he was gr- actually the- worse. <sighs> he was churning these out. Sp- Spy Kids, two thousand and one. Spy Kids two, two thousand and two. Spy Kids three, two thousand and three. <laughs> yep wow. there you go maybe that explains why this looks so bad but it, it, i feel like the people who did the cgi had never done proper cgi before and they were like oh yeah this studio can do it give it to them 
And then it came to them and it was like, oh, the film's out next week. We're ready to ship. Okay, let's have a look. And they were like, oh my God. But they just had to go with it. And the strangest part about it is that Danny Trejo is in these movies <laughs> and his name is still Machete. So yep. the Spy Kids universe and the rest of the Rodriguez films, they're all taking place in the same world. Love it. Amazing. <laughs> How weird is that? It's ter- These pictures are brilliant. It looks like they're just standing in front of painted backgrounds. Yeah. They, they're not even like in... They're not in it. No, they're, they're not, not even in, in the background. No. They're on it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're on. They're, they're, they're just like it. slapped on this image. Yeah, there's no depth. There's no like blur in the background. Oh god. Yeah. I mean, you. I, you, I know. I said you've some of the other ones you had to, to see. To Rodriguez. So he in um, you know, some of those things we we talked about. You know, he he directed Sin City the same year as he directed The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> he he directed oh Once god. Upon a Time in Mexico the same year that he directed Spy Kids 3D Game Over. <laughs> Look at the difference in quality well, that, between those two films. That's insane. You can see which one he was concentrating on. Let's <laughs> yeah, say that. very much so. He's bringing back Shark Boy and Lava Girl, isn't he? We mentioned that on the show a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yes. I he heard, yes. A TV show. Yeah. Why don't? Don't know. <laughs> he directed an episode of The Mandalorian this season as well. He did? Yes. <laughs> I How did he yesterday? make something <laughs> that good? Yeah. You're right, yeah. Wow. I've got a feeling I know why he made kids' films. Because worldwide, it, the first Spy Kids film made like 150 million. Wow! Yes, it was. It was quite a success. Like it was. Like I said, it was a decent film. It was like a, an all right kids film about kids taking up the mantle of the parents at the end of the day because the parents were secret agents and they get kidnapped. And also, who is it? It's Cheech. Cheech from Cheech and Chong. That's their <laughs> other uncle as well as Uncle Machete. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all his usual suspects, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just got like all of his 3D mates. He made like 200 million. What? Jeez. Oh my God. That's why he kept making them then. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've got an yeah. answer to that question. No way. These films aren't great. Yeah, but I'm making fat stacks. I'm making so... stacks, mate. Yeah, that's bad time. So there you go. That is that is my number two. Good choice. It's awful. Thank you. I've enjoyed those <laughs> nice. number twos. That's that's a good, <laughs> good set of films. That great is. number twos. Nick, do you want to hit us with your number one, your worst film you've ever seen? Sure. So my number one is from 1996. This is the closest I have come to walking out of a cinema. And the only reason I didn't was because I was 15 and I had to wait to get my lift home. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Giving your age away, though. This <laughs> is a movie which is so bad, but it is the story behind the production is so interesting I would like us to do its own episode. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and wow. it's directed, well, it ended up being directed by a guy called John Frankenheimer who directed Ronin. He directed French Connection 2. He's, he came in to rescue this movie uh, because the original director was fired after three days. It <laughs> is Whoa. The Island of Dr. Moreau starring Val Kilmer, uh, Marlon Brando and David Thewlis. Yeah. It's so that's, bad that's a great choice but it's a terrible film so this is the movie that val kilmer earned his yeah. awful reputation <laughs> he walked off set he um refused to read the dialogue as was scripted uh brando wouldn't come out of his trailer <laughs> <laughs> wow. um he made friends with a midget uh <laughs> who he kind of adopted <laughs> who ended up being the inspiration for mini me from austin powers um, this, and that is what? just touching the surface of what went on behind this, this, the scenes of this. So I can see why it ended up being such a bad movie. But everyone in it is terrible. Val Kilmer's terrible. It's it's an adaptation of a, a sort of a, quite a, quite an old um, novel, and it is basically uh, it's about a guy, a British guy, played by uh, David Thewlis. He is sent to investigate this island paradise where marlon brando is conducting experiments to meld the genetics of animals and humans uh, and he has ended up creating this zoo of hybrid creatures basically um and it all goes wrong of course it does. it's a bit jurassic okay. park are, are you, you making know, they, this they up? try to overthrow their uh, their creator uh the makeup's not great the story's shonky the acting's awful Brando was just making it up as he went along. Um, <laughs> it's so bad. It's awful. 
I sound. would have worked out if I. I know, I know. Again, I've been been back and checked it out since. I was going to say, have you seen it? Since? Yeah, it's it's so bad. Wow. They, it's it's really some of the creatures as well. It's, it's yeah, this makeup hanging off. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I remember. What's it called again? I want to Google uh, it. The Island of Doctor Moreau. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I've never heard of. Was there a Simpsons like? Yes. Spin yes, on there that? was. Yeah, because it's like it's. It's a cat with the body of a yeah. cat. <laughs> <laughs> and the head of a cat. I, I'd forgotten it exists. I have seen it since I was probably that age as well. And it's, wow, it's, this is bad. Would you like to hear some of its um, awards? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Six nominations at the Razzies. <laughs> worst picture, worst director, one worst supporting actor for Brando. Uh, Kilmer was also nominated. Um, at the 1996 Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. <laughs> Brando was nominated for worst on-screen hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's it's yeah it is truly the worst worst movie I can ever remember. Uh, Practical seeing. effects, however, done by Stan Winston. Yeah, it's it's no way it's bad. I will never watch that movie. <laughs> I think we should all watch it. I think we should all watch all of our number ones. I mean, there could be some good material in that. Yeah. <laughs> All of our number ones, all four of us should watch all four of them. I know. Oh, it's got Thingy from Austin Powers. Again, it's got, uh, is it Basil? Yes. Yeah, it's got him. Oh, no wow. way. <laughs> there's, there's actually a documentary, which I haven't watched, but I wanted to watch. There is a documentary about the making of this oh, really? film. Yeah. I'll definitely check that out. That'll be interesting. Yeah, we'll have to watch it. Cool. Good list, Nick. I'm impressed. Cheers. They were good. Jordan, what's your number one? What's the worst film you've ever seen? I'm going to piss a lot of people off with this one. Awesome. I like it. And I, I already know what it's going to be. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've been waiting for it all night. It is Alien. <laughs> Ooh, hot oh, hot take. God. <laughs> Spitting hot take. <laughs> Hottest take. I fucking hate this film. And that, I, don't, I genuinely never want to watch it again. Never. This tell, is... tell us about your Alien experience. Yes, but do. I would much rather watch any other film out of any of our lists than watch Alien again. Because it is that fucking boring you don't know what's up my number one or harrison's yet you can't say things like that. <laughs> i can guarantee i would rather watch your films over alien so <laughs> i don't know for anyone who's not aware of the plot of this film there's an alien on a ship and people die because of the alien on the ship which kills people there we yep. go <laughs> so Simple. my main issue really stems from the amount of hype that's always been you know like surrounded it because i didn't i only watched it last year uh by god this is the longest, most boring film in the world, and I nearly rented the director's cut. <laughs> I am so yeah. glad I didn't. So it's like, it's not just boring, though. It's monumentally boring. I've told this story before, but my girlfriend at the time decided she was going to watch a bit with me. She fell asleep on the sofa for 45 minutes, woke up and said, what's happened? So I paused the film. was like, literally fucking nothing has happened in 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> nothing. It's like, some people died. I don't know their names. I don't know their names. I don't know who they are. I, I don't care at all. <laughs> and it's like, the, I only cared about the cat. Even Sigourney Weaver's character. I don't give a shit. Yeah, some Jonesy. woman on a fucking ship. I don't know. Jesus. It's just, uh, sorry. I love it your really passion. Gets I love that. It's, I completely understand the relevance of it and the I give it the recognition it needs for what it's done for cinema and what an absolute genius thing it was at the time. It yeah. does not hold up, and it is a bag of shit today. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that's good about it is the visuals. Yes. The retro is it cool. Good. It's, it's yeah. the stuff yeah. behind the movie, though, isn't it? It's the it, Like you say, it's all the Geiger artwork and all that. Yeah. You know, all the dips. The production yeah. design. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I haven't revisited it for a long time, so I'd be interested to see what I thought of it because it's been so long since I've watched it. I remember when I watched it, I didn't like it, so I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, it, the it's definitely incredible. slow. Like I, I prefer to watch the second one, yeah, or even the third one, which is saying a lot. Like a lot of people don't like the third one. It, it says a lot to, about Jordan, like watching that and getting bored. That he watched 2001: A Space Odyssey. I love and that movie. Enjoyed it. <laughs> But I watched, watched Alien Love that. and thought it was boring. Yeah, I just, yeah. Also, yeah. Aliens is great. Aliens is it's great. Such a Aliens is awesome. Aliens, I watched Aliens, Aliens, Aliens before, before I watched Alien as well. So, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, that might be why. I was forced to watch both of these movies. 
Alien for the podcast and Aliens because my mate came over from Turkey and was like, we're sitting down and watching this. And he made me watch Back to the Future. You shouldn't also never good. need to be also made to watch Back to the Future. You should just... I've never seen it. Yeah, he was like, you're sitting there and you're watching this fucking movie. I was like, okay. <laughs> I feel like grabbing you and doing that sometimes. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure Harrison making... does more often. <laughs> oh, all the time. Yeah, that's why I have literally done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be our highest rated film of the night, I think. It's 8.4 on IMDb. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. That's a good one. Good choice. Fair play. I expected way more flack than I got. You'll you, you, yeah, you no, get it, no. but I, I don't like it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I I think there's, I think there's a good argument in there though because it's it's almost its legacy is bigger than, uh, you know that's the important thing. How good is it the actually? Of its parts. That's what Jordan's today because yeah. he'd never seen it before and he he knows of the legacy. The film doesn't hold up. Yeah, it's overhyped Going into for it him, yeah. after that and seeing it for the first time. It's a different perspective. It's a different perspective. It? It's really interesting. Yeah. I would have expected mm-hmm. something at least bearable. That's the issue, is that I was like, oh, it's maybe not as good as I thought it'd be. And then it just kept being not bearable. It yeah. it didn't... My expectations were, like, lowering. And it never got to a point where my expectations were lower than what was happening on screen. <laughs> the n- <laughs> Which I don't know how. Yeah. The nostalgia factor is a big thing in films, though, isn't it? If you've grown up with a film... Yeah, you're going oh, to yeah. like it a lot more than if you haven't. It's like I know somebody who had never seen the Goonies. Yeah, and when she sees, I've it, not. <laughs> what? Well, that's yeah. definitely yeah. happening. Why are you surprised? <laughs> Why are you surprised? <laughs> I don't know. But when she she watched it for the first time as an adult and didn't get it, she doesn't like it. But for me, it's one of the greatest family films of all time. And yeah, but it's, ta- it's taking you that. back to a place. Exactly. Isn't yeah, it? it is. It's the nostalgia factor of taking mm-hmm. you back there. It's still, it's still a great film. That okay. being said, She's I wrong. love The Thing. <laughs> yeah, The Thing's a great film. The Thing's yeah. an amazing film. Not Brilliant just because Kurt Russell's a beautiful man in that <laughs> film. His hair. And it's all real. That hair and beard, he grew real. I know. Unbelievable. Amazing. That's why he makes, so, that's why he makes such a good Santa now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Whoever came exactly. up with that idea to cast him as Santa is an absolute <laughs> genius. Both oh, of these yeah. films are really yeah. good. Did you hear we're getting a new uh, The Thing? Yeah. I don't Which want is it. based on the, the book. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's hopefully the way it's of the, Disney. No. <laughs> I know, yeah. Disney reboots upon an reboots. animated remake. Uh, yeah. Wow. The cat's cool in Alien, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jonesy. Jonesy. Jonesy's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> right. Do you want to know my number one? Yes. Um, I don't think you will have seen this. I don't think you will have heard of it. I know Nick's seen it because we watched it together. Um, it's from 2002. It is a film called Swim Fam. No, never heard of Good. it. Nope. Don't ever watch it. It is. Do you remember Nick? Do you remember watching it? I can remember. I have seen it. I can remember <laughs> it was bad. I couldn't tell you anything about it other than it's a. It's kind of a high school stalker type movie. It's it's a high school movie. It's like about, a movie of the week type thing, yeah, isn't it? It's a high school movie. The premise is that there's a guy in the high school swimming team, and there's a new girl who starts at the school, and she starts stalking him. And that is literally all that happens in the whole film. It's terrible. We actually saw it together in a cinema because we, I came to visit you when you were at uni. Yeah. And we went to, I decided to go to the cinema to see Signs. Yeah. With um, another Shalana Man film. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a good and, movie. And we though. missed it. That's we, a good we, movie. we got there too late. And the only film that we could go and see at the time was Swim Fan. And oh my god, is it terrible? It's so bad. All I ever remember about it is the car crash scene. Uh, you won't remember it because your memory's no. terrible. <laughs> but there's a scene. <laughs> it's a car crash scene, and it's you've seen it through the windscreen of the car. Okay. Okay. But and as the car crashes, the camera turns as well. So the, as the car's spinning, the camera's also spinning. So it doesn't look like anything's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and it, they're just sitting there. Oh, wow. It's it's so bad. It's one of the worst directed films I've ever seen. It's directed by a guy called John Paulson. Um, he went on to direct Hide and Seek with Robert De Niro All right, um, yeah. in 2005. I'm drawing a blank on that one as well. <laughs> and he's yeah, never I've made a film that, since. Yeah. Okay. They're the only two films he's ever directed. And yeah, it's terrible. It's, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Jesse Bradford. He will, he, he, he's been in a few bits and bobs mm. since, but it's such a bad film. It It's so bad, I almost want to watch it again just to, because it's, 
It'll be to relive it. 18 years ago now. <laughs> but it's, it's odd, isn't it? It's, it's obviously just a thing of its time. You know, there's a bit of that sort of slasher. I know what he did last summer. That sort of... Yeah. There was that sort of group of stuff out. And it it, it is odd how, like I say, it's, it's one of these almost movie of the week TV movies. How yeah. has that actually snuck through and got out? It got a cinema release <laughs> at the same time as Signs. Um, if you watch the trailer, it's, it's doesn't, it hasn't aged well either because... Okay. She's stalking him, but obviously he doesn't have a mobile phone because it's 2002. She's stalking him by email on his computer, his school computer. And he he logs in on the emails one morning. He's like, you have 81 new emails. And it's like, wow, you have, that has dated it so badly. (laughs) It's like, who stalks on me by email? (laughs) But I don't think I've ever considered that thing. (laughs) No. Hang on. Jordan's just emailed me. (laughs) 81 times. (laughs) I, I, one of them ends up, up dead. Bot? One of them ends up dead. I think it's the girl. I, I can't remember, and I don't care. <laughs> but I, I, half, of me, <laughs> half of me wants to see it. It's actually on Amazon Prime, so I might actually check it out at some point. But it's only on for an hour and twenty-five minutes. It felt it's just stuck in my every time ever since then for eighteen years. Whenever anybody's asked me the worst film I've ever seen, I've always came back with Swim Fam. It's always been that. It's, I've ne- it's wow. never deviated from it. It's always been the worst film I've ever seen. So yeah, that's my number one. Good choice. Thank you. Harrison, Very finish good. us off. Well. Whoa. <laughs> I, I hope. Jesus. Yeah, I know. What a <laughs> Christmas it. treat. I hope you have seen this. Merry Christmas, yeah. everybody. Christmas came early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, this is a film that I I hope you've seen to have experienced it with me. <laughs> it is from 2005 and it is by Alex Gutterman who did Cats and Dogs, if you remember that, which was like a weird cats with secret agents or something. And it is Son of the Mask. Oh, yes. yes. (laughs) I think I've seen it. You have seen it. I I am so glad. This movie, this has explained how bad it was. It had a budget of $100 million. Wow. Really? And it made 59 (laughs) worldwide. Wowzers. Yes, it feels like a straight to TV sequel, and I I'd, I'd forgotten I'd seen it. It was that bad. I I was going through lists of terrible films because I was like, I'm sure I must have seen another terrible film, and I came across the screenshot of him as the mask, and I had blocked it out because he's terrifying in it. <laughs> it's basically a follow up to the Jim Carrey film that everyone knows, The Mask. Everyone pretty much loves The Mask. Yeah. Except they took Jim Carrey out of it and put a guy called James Kennelly in it. Who I know the actor; I've seen him in some other stuff, but I, he is the, one of the worst things in this film. Did he, and it may just be the way that he's directed. Did he get that job just because his name sounds a bit like Jim Carrey? <laughs> it's it's Jamie Kennedy. He's oh, in, Jamie Kennedy. So he's yeah. in um, from Scream. Scream. Yeah. yeah, he's in the Scream films. That's right. Yeah, he's in Scream. It's also got it's like, coming like, in it. That you enjoy. You they that do. Is. That's what I was going to say. Weirdly, <laughs> also in Spy Kids, because this film kind of feels like Spy Kids. I wouldn't be surprised if it has like a cross a crossover of like a production designer. I didn't check that, and I kind of wish I had done. I feel like maybe some of the production staff might be the same. Uh, and it's a shame because Alan Cumming, like we said, is a good actor, but he plays Loki in this, which is what the mask is supposed to be. Yeah. So. You probably remember, and the listeners probably remember, that The Mask's quite an adult film. Like, it's based on a, on a comic book, which is quite an adult comic book. It's actually quite violent. Whereas this one is, like, a weird kids' film. And I want to... For people who haven't seen it, uh, how The Mask looks, we all know, remember that, like, Jim Carrey is The Mask. He's bald with a green head and these really big teeth. Whereas in this, he's got hair. And it's like... Lego clip-on bright red yeah. hair. It looks like plastic, like with a centre parting and curtains. Do you re- do any of you remember the the awesome music scene in the original Mask? You know when he does like the epic Chicago yeah. swing music. I and he's actually dancing. watched the Mask quite that, recently, within the last couple of months. I, I did as well. Yeah, because it's on Netflix yeah, now, it is, isn't yeah. it? That's why I watched it as well. And that scene is brilliant. Like the whole film's good, but particularly that music scene is choreographed so well and he's doing all the spinning round with uh what who is it who's in it with him? Uh is it Cameron Diaz? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With the, in the red dress. Yeah, as, that's right, yeah, yeah. And he does like the howling thing when his eyes stick out like the cartoon. 
So they've tried to recreate that scene in this film. However, it's the worst fucking 90s terrible hip hop song that sounds like Vanilla Ice, literally from the 90s. And I found out after doing a bit of research on this that there is a cut scene and I need to tell you about it. Okay. Because basically after the weird music scene, the mask as the character goes home and totally gets his bang on with his wife. Because as you remember, oh, really? this this film is called Son of the Mask. Yeah. And the cut scene is basically weird green mask jizz <laughs> swimming <laughs> to find the egg. And that is why the kid is born with the mask's powers. Wow. That's and fun for all yes. the family. <laughs> Exactly. Wow. So it's, they've taken this film that is, they've literally made like Spy Kids style for kids film and put like this weird adult thing in it where it just completely doesn't fit. And then the baby has all these strange powers. Like he pisses in a giant stream on his dad. And I just, I don't know. I think even as a kid, I didn't finish this film because I don't remember any of the end scenes that I went back and watched. I'm pretty sure I was just like, yeah, I'm done. And just turned it off like halfway through. And I feel so bad for Alan Cumming because he's really good. But this film, I don't know why he did it. Why? <laughs> Alan, why? <laughs> why? So Yeah, uh, there's a bit where he face plants a, a policeman into the pavement and like embeds his head into the pavement. And that was what straight up killed him. And it's pretty funny, but no one reacts in the street. <laughs> Just like it's every every day that happens in New York. It's just that's what happens. <laughs> it's probably true, to be fair. Yeah. Something good has come of this film. Okay. <laughs> I am going to buy the comics because they look fucking awesome. How have the I never seen look, these uh, before? Yeah. Yeah, they're Dark Horse comics. Like, uh, it thingy. looks great. Um, it looks like the Punisher yeah. mix with the Joker. This looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be a really good comic series. I've been looking at getting after after I watched it on Netflix, the the original, the, the few months ago. It made me look into the comics, and I've been looking to try and get them as well. Uh, there's a Joker I hope version. There's no comic the to Joker these. mask. There actually is. Yeah, yeah, I've there never is. Never seen yeah. you sound yeah. so Holy excited, shit. Jordan. Sorry, I know, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It looks great. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, this... I'd much rather watch that than Alien, though. Yeah. <laughs> this this yeah, movie yeah. is two point two on. IMDb. I was just going to say that. Yeah, it's. It's one of the worst for wow. sure. Jordan's uh, got the highest rating. Only... Has got the lowest by a long way. I know. 2.2 2 is insane. That never happens. <laughs> I, we've never even come across a film that's 2.2. 2. No, no. No way. I don't think I've ever come across it myself on there. I didn't actually look at the score. Uh, there's one redeeming factor, and there is it's one funny bit where Odin comes down to try and stop Loki, and a neighbor walks out of whatever the guy, the char- main character's name is. I don't even know his name. And Odin turns the neighbor's head into a giant nose. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick... it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so Nick went through the Razzie Awards on a film. What was what was the film you just went through the Razzie Awards on? Oh, The Island of Dr. Terrible. Moreau. Oh, yeah. So this got nominated for some Razzies as well. Um, oh, wow. Okay. It actually won Worst Remake or Sequel at the Razzies in 2006. Um, it was nominated for Very Worst cool. Picture, Worst Actor for Jamie Kennedy, Worst Supporting Actor for Alan Cumming, Worst Supporting Actor for Bob Hoskins. Worst Screen Couple for Jamie Kennedy and anybody stuck sharing a screen with him. (laughs) (laughs) Worst worst Director for Lawrence Gutterman and Worst Screenplay for Lance Kazai. So it kind of, it had a lot of nominations for for the Razzies. Yeah, it was, it's honestly. But yeah, that is brutal. That's why it's my number one. He's known as like a terrible actor though, isn't he? Yeah. Pretty much only the two screen films that he's in with. The only, the only good things he's ever done. He was in something I saw recently. Doesn't he have a, like a reality show or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he did for a while, didn't he? Like a prank show. Yeah. He's in something I saw recently. He's not aging well. Okay. I can't remember what it was now, but it was something. <laughs> so yeah, that's all of our uh, our top fives. What do we think? I think it's some really good... Awful. That's a they're really good list. There's some awful movies in there. <laughs> yeah, they really yeah. are. They really are. Do you think we should commit to watching the, the top ones? All, all of us. I, I oh think we God. can have a look at doing something. I didn't agree yeah. to that. You up for watching the Son <laughs> yeah. of the Mask again? I'll watch all of them again, but Alien. <laughs> you guys can have that one. <laughs> I'm going to make you sit for Alien again, Jordan. I'm sorry. No, you're not. I swear <laughs> to God. I will chew off my own arms to get out watching that piece sure, of shit again. I'm not sure there's much more we can add to the 
40 years or 50 years of Alien. No, that's probably true, to be fair. (laughs) Some of the others, I think we could. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Right, we got anything else we want to do? Anything else we want to chat about before we go? Plug some stuff. Yeah, do you want to plug some stuff, guys? Plug some stuff. You go, Harrison. (laughs) I was Um, making it do it My voice broke there. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Uh, You can find... Me personally at Haswell, and you can find Jordan at the Mr. John Core on Twitter. You can get our links to our Discord where you can join in the insane community and be asked a hilarious question when you join <laughs> that I'm not going to tell you about. <laughs> We've all been through <laughs> you can it. Find it's our just like a rite of passage, passage isn't it? It is. It is. It's a complete rite of passage now. I love it when we're, you get like, have to make like semi celebrities <laughs> on on the podcast and they have to come in and get asked that question straight away. It's really people yeah, you don't have to send know like a warning you've just message. been talking to for the show. And they just get hit with that yeah, as soon as yeah. they come in. It's 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 hilarious. Someone joins. It's like Ross, no. <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> Ross, wait. <laughs> I've told you before. Ross is a deviant, and he needs locking up. He shouldn't be allowed out in public. He does. I hope like he's going to watch all the films. Slipping out of your hand when you walk in a dog, like no, come back. Yeah, he's, he's very much in the vein of Shark Selects. He, he fits into their mold quite well. Stop saying yeah, he vain. Does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talking of those guys, like, <laughs> yeah. on their latest episode, they called me and you were cunt. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> I've not listened yet. <laughs> I was, like, I was not did. happy with that. Yes. It's oh, wow. <laughs> that sounds about, you must have done something pretty bad. <laughs> Apparently we tried to steal their jobs, but that was a lie. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> you I know went exactly to an interview for about, the jobs. Sue said it in, the episode, in this latest episode. It really made me laugh. I was just, you know, when you're not expecting somebody it to insult you. It catch me off guard as well. <laughs> when you're not expecting somebody to insult you, and then all of a sudden you're listening to a podcast and somebody calls you a cunt. It, it, just... it is weird when you hear your name on other podcasts. I love isn't it. it. I love it when you guys talk about us. It, just, it really, mo- really yeah. makes my day. I usually only get called that it... at home at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your kids yeah. need to watch their language. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Harrison. Anyway, carry, sorry, sorry, carry on. We went off on a cunt tangent. On a cunt tangent. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can't remember what we did. What were, we did? You were plugging plug your show. So you can find us at Grief Brito. Yeah, you can find us at Grief Brito everywhere. If you want to hear some game related, spooky related, and movie related stuff, we've got a lot of excited stuff planned for next year. There's going to be some spicy expansions, I think, coming. Oh, nice. So get ready for that. Yes. Excited. Find us everywhere at Grief Brito. <laughs> Definitely go and check these guys out. They're, they're amazing. Their show is amazing. And Thank you, dude. You're like the kings of podcasting, aren't you? Everybody kind of looks up to you too. You are way too I, kind. <laughs> that is very big praise, it's and I don't true. think it's true. It true. <laughs> that's, why you, that's why they call you the Pod Daddy. Pod Daddy, yeah, yeah. So what is it? That's pod Daddy Long trying to put out fires. Thing. Pod Daddy Long Legs, Lung. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the full title. I need to get a T-shirt with that on. You do. Get that made. You need to get Ross to draw you as like a big spider with a big long leg. Yeah. That, oh yes. Ross, 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 we know you're listening. <laughs> sort it out. He's probably in the Discord waiting for us to finish. Yeah. So yeah, check. Just he probably is. Yeah, he, I saw him. He, he actually commented on something as we were recording. Oh, did he? Did, did he say? Finish your Christmas he says, dinner. Oh, first, I see Ross. the chat is <laughs> full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. It's cr- he'll be listening to it Christmas morning. He always does. I put our Patreon episodes out, and then like two hours later, he's texting me about them, and I'm like, "How have you listened to that already? I've not even proof to listen to it yet. How have you got my yeah. number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, there's ways and means." I'll give my number to anybody. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I think... Whore. Is that everything? I mean, you can plug us if you want. Shall I? <laughs> well, you're here already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to, you can check us out on Instagram and Twitter at BOTS underscore podcast, Facebook.com slash bottom of the stream, Patreon, Patreon.com slash bottom of the stream, where a couple of quid every month will give you some free access to episodes. Free access to episodes? That doesn't even make sense. Early access to episodes, bonus episodes, you get a wild card. Jordan's got a wild card. Are you playing it yet, Jordan? Yes. It does? Uh, no, I've not had a look at the long list in a long time, but I will definitely say the Patreon's 100% worth it. Thank you, mate. Yep. That's, that's yep. much appreciated. And you can come into the Discord and join the little chat in there if you want. The link will be in the bottom of the show notes. Excellent. If you can't do any yes. of that, leave us a review any of the usual pod review places. Uh, we just like to say thank you once again for the Grief Burrito boys for coming on. Harrison, Jordan, it's really appreciated. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much for having it's us. It's a wonderful Christmas. No worries. It's been a Thank fun time. Thank you for listening, everyone. Enjoy the rest oh, yeah. of your Merry Christmas, Christmas day. Enjoy the rest of your <laughs> Christmas shall. day. Don't do anything we wouldn't do. And we'll be back next week to talk about whatever the film comes out because we've recorded out of order, so I can't even say <laughs> what film it's going to be. <laughs> See you next week. Cheers. Bye. Bye. It's another two-hour episode, I'm sorry.